The Argentinian economy is hanging by a thread, and to date, the peso's market value has fallen by half against the U.S. dollar, with inflation hitting a staggering 113 percent. You see, Argentina is currently preparing for the upcoming presidential election, which is scheduled to take place in October. But years of mismanagement and corruption means the country is hinging its possible economic resurrection solely on the shoulders of candidates. But with local policymakers torn between printing pesos to cover the government's bills and the need to avoid hyperinflation, it seems as if Argentina could be the next country to fall in South America. Today, we explore why Argentina might be on the brink of collapse and what are the plans forward that could prevent this. To start with, the Argentinian economy has had to deal with a multitude of events over the past few years. These foreign events, which include the likes of COVID-19 and the numerous wars kicking off worldwide, have seen a massive downturn in the economic situation for Argentina. But to gain an understanding of exactly how bad the economic situation has been, we need to take a closer look at inflation. You see, while countries like Britain have experienced annual price rises that are in line with the world average of single digits, Argentinian inflation hasn't been that low in decades. In fact, inflation has been higher than 100%, tethering around 113% for the whole of 2023. As of this video, only Venezuela and Lebanon have higher rates of inflation. Unfortunately, this means that the average Argentine citizen simply cannot make ends meet anymore. However, locals have been turning to the trustworthy dollar when saving for their futures. And as more people turn toward the dollar, the lack of local currency being saved in local banks has all but diminished. Argentina also has a policy that means locals can only buy around $200 a month at the official exchange rate. But we all know that once you start capping people, the black market will begin to soar. As you might expect, this means the currency is simply vanishing in exchange for uncontrolled foreign currency in the country, something that is devastating the local economy and has seen the value of the peso fall by almost half in the past year when compared to the U.S. dollar. So why is this happening? And why have citizens been forced to turn to this new illegal method of saving? Well, the easiest explanation is to look at what is exactly going on inside the economy itself. You see, Argentina is the second largest economy in South America, with a GDP of $630 billion. It's worth noting that Argentina was once one of the richest countries in the world, but as we turn back to 1946 and then President Juan Domingo Perón, we might gain a few answers. Perón himself was a fascinating figure around the time World War II broke out and spent plenty of his time in fascist Italy and Berlin. Here, he was heavily influenced by the way the Italians and the Nazis operated. However, being part of the labor movement allowed Perón to introduce numerous policies, like the eight-hour workday, increased wages, and expensive welfare schemes. But thanks to his embrace of economic isolationism, he could force the country into focusing on national sovereignty. In fact, under Perón, Argentina would become reliant on itself, shutting itself off from international trade. Unfortunately, many Peronists have taken office in the past two decades, which has continued this trend, and as the world has evolved into the export and import business, Argentina has shrunk as a percentage of global exports each year. If we look at things like lithium and copper, we can see that Argentina clearly has plenty of reserves when it comes to these resources. However, they were only ranked as the 79th biggest exporter of copper in 2021, exporting an average of over $83 in copper ore. In stark contrast, the rising economy of Chile is the biggest exporter of copper in the world. The country exported approximately $50.7 billion of copper during the same year. But their isolationist tactics are not the only thing that's holding the country back. And if we look at the government itself, we gain a much clearer picture of what is happening to the finances. In essence, isolationism has not worked to make Argentina independent, but rather stifle the economy to grow with that of other foreign nations. However, the modern government has also been largely to blame for its massive overspending. One of the biggest issues in Argentina is poverty. According to Wage Center, the average monthly income in 2023 
amounted to $645. In comparison, Chileans boast higher salaries, exceeding $1,300 per month. However, the average European salary is just under $2,300 per month. To deal with this massive offset, Argentina has been subsidizing prices for various basic needs. In 2022, Europeans spend around $40 per month on electricity, whereas Argentinians spend approximately $5. That meant during the 2022-2023 financial year, Argentina spent around $12.5 billion, or 2% of its annual GDP, on subsidizing this basic need. However, the government also needs to spend on the salaries of local employees. You see, of the 13 million people currently in formal employment, one-third of these people currently work for the government, and a lot of the spending goes directly to pay salaries and pensions, leaving virtually nothing to be spent on investments, technology, and infrastructure. So with Argentina heavily focused on the poor, it seems like the economy is suffering. But foreign debt, and especially the International Monetary Fund, are also down the throats of the South American nation. As of this video, Argentina has been running a fiscal deficit for the last 13 years. And when you continue to run such debt for such a long period, you are bound to run into problems with economic policy. However, much like Zimbabwe had to do a few years back, the government is trying to counteract this deficit by simply, well, printing money. In fact, Argentina has become dependent on the central bank for printing money to basically finance spending. But any educated person in finance would tell you that once you start sporadically printing money, inflation takes a turn for the worse. The math is simple. If you don't have the resources to back up the money you print, your currency will slowly weaken essentially rendering it worthless over a few years. But aside from simply printing money to fund the local government's ambitions, the IMF and borrowing have also been to blame for the Argentinian economic situation. You see, the IMF is one of the biggest financial institutions in the world and often works hand in hand with the World Bank in an attempt to save countries. Unfortunately, these funds are never given to countries but rather sent as a loan that needs to be repaid in due course. It was just five years ago that Argentina became the Washington-based global lender's single biggest debtor, receiving a $57 billion bailout to help then-President Mauricio Macri's market-friendly government steer out of an economic crisis. Back then, Argentina was already facing high inflation and a massive budget deficit. However, the program failed to put the Latin American country back on its feet. But as things were about to change, the new Peronist-led government came into office by late 2019. Fortunately, the IMF only set modest targets for the repayment of this loan. But under the current administration, numerous targets have been missed, mandated by a 2022 IMF loan tailored to repay the remaining $44 billion. Fortunately, the IMF is currently pushing ahead with reviews and disbursements in an attempt not to force the Argentine government to default, something that is likely to worsen the poverty-stricken population even more. But thanks to this laid-back approach from the IMF, pressure is building inside and outside of the organization, with many pushing to ensure Argentina's treatment is in line with those countries that have had to default on their debt. In fact, Analysts are pushing that the IMF take a much harder stance on Argentina following the October elections. Former U.S. representative to the IMF, Mark Sobel, had the following to say, No matter who wins after the vote, the IMF should insist that the government either bite the bullet or otherwise the fund should pull the plug on its support, even if that means huge arrears. If we draw a comparison to other countries currently owing the IMF, we can see that Argentina's debt to the IMF is more than double that of Egypt, which is ironically the second highest borrower. In fact, Argentina holds almost a third of all the IMF's total lending, and due to the light conditions put in force for Argentina, they didn't do anything to actually stabilize the economy. So while the IMF is planning to help, the setup of repayments, which needs to be done in foreign currency, is both extreme and damaging to the local economy. You see, one of the biggest issues faced by the locals inside the country is the restrictions placed on trade. In 2021, corn and soybeans were the two biggest exports from Argentina, with the country exporting $8.88 billion in corn and $8.63 billion in soybeans to international partners. Unfortunately, 
local exporters face an export tax of 33%. So if we look at the math and say soybeans cost around $500 a ton, the local exporter will only receive $335. Then they have to exchange these dollars for pesos, of which the government takes another cut, especially when the dollar rate is bad. It is for this reason that many farmers will keep their soybeans and corn in the silos until the exchange rate improves, essentially stifling supply and demand. But the government had this figured out and recently started implementing the soya dollar. This means those exporting soy can get a slightly better exchange rate. But according to the Argentinian, those looking to hire a singer need to pay the official dollar plus taxes, while those traveling abroad need to use their Argentinian credit card to pay the official dollar plus taxes. Locals have dubbed this the dollar cold play and dollar Qatar respectively. Unfortunately, this means you might end up paying different prices for the same thing due to these legislative policies. But with impending doom, is there any true solution? While Argentina has been cycling through presidents over the last few decades, one of the biggest problems remains how to fix all this. Numerous administrations have proposed different solutions, but by the end of the term, the rest is the same. More debt and more inflation. Numerous economic experts have all agreed that the only way to salvage the economy is for the government to essentially spend less. One way this could be done is through reducing the current subsidies, but that still doesn't deal with the soaring inflation. Since the currency will need to be devalued, it will significantly increase inflation. In fact, even the disillusioned population is now starting to realize the issues, making it increasingly hard for presidential candidates to convince the people that short-term pain will bring long-term prosperity. You see, if Argentina cannot manage to win back the trust of its citizens or the trust of markets, it's never going to be able to fix its problem. But to build trust, you'll need to have good policies for decades and through numerous administrations. The biggest problem, which is also faced all around the world, is the fact that each government is hungry for power, trying to implement short-term solutions to remain in power. However, it will take an administration willing to put pain on the people to build toward the future and give future administrations the chance to build on this success. But with things not seemingly ready to change in Argentina, it remains a political battlefield, marred by mismanagement and bad policy decisions. Do you think the 2023 presidential winner will finally turn the tide and restore Argentina to its former glory? We look forward to your comments below and make sure to subscribe to our channel.